Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add screen tones to add different shades to your comics using GIMP. The version I'm using today is the latest one for the Mac, which is 2.10. In my previous video, I showed you how to add screen tones traditionally using paper screen tones. So if you want to learn how to do it that way, the link for the video will be in the description. But anyways, moving on to how to do digital screen tones. First, you want to add a new layer on top of your base layer. I like to label my layers so I don't get confused, so I'll call this screen tone. A second, you want to use the rectangular select tool, or any select tool for that matter, to select the area you want to put your screen tone. You don't have to be extremely precise, as you can erase the screen tone later. Third, use the fill tool using a color on the grayscale to fill the selection. I want my screen tone to be on the light side, so I went with the lighter gray. Next, you want to click image and hover over mode, and then finally change the image from RGB to grayscale. Afterwards, you want to go to filters, then hover over distorts, and then click newsprint. In the newsprint distortion, there's three main things that you want to change. The cell size, angle, and the oversampling. In adjusting the cell size, I put mine to 15. Just enough where the dots are not overwhelmingly noticeable, nor are they too small. You can adjust the cell size based on your preference. Next, the angle can be adjusted to change the orientation and direction of the dots again based on your preference. You can also change the spot function from dots to lines and other patterns for screen tones. Finally, increasing the oversampling increases the fullness of the round shape. For these three variables, you can just play around with it until you get the screen tone of your liking. When you have all that done, you'll have your screen tone layer. You can start cleaning off the excess screen tone by decreasing the opacity of the screen tone layer. I like decreasing it from 100 to 70. When you can see the excess screen tone, you can use the eraser tool to clear out the screen tone you don't want. You can also adjust the eraser size as you clear it to get more precise strokes. In comparison to the traditional method of applying screen tones, digital screen tones are in the long term much cheaper to do which is important for a long project. A traditional screen tone may run you around $12 per sheet if you are outside of Japan, while Photoshop costs around $20 a month to use. Photoshop is probably best to use if you are a professional who needs to use the industry standard, but otherwise if you need to save money, GIMP also does the trick since it's a free open source software with similar functionalities. Digital screen tones also provide a cleaner result than traditional screen tones when scanned in, which most of the time is good depending on your style of art. Though sometimes artists like to do it the traditional way and feel more comfortable with physical paper, so you should try both methods. After finishing most of the clearing, increase the opacity back to 100 to see the final screen tone. If the edges look off, you can refine them by erasing further with full opacity. And voila, you finish your screen tone. It really adds more depth to the picture. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in my brand new digital comic, click the link to my site showing off my work. I'll see you guys next time.